and but, devil baby movies. It's, it's, a, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Devil babies? Are devil thing. babies! That's going to be the title of this show. Devil <laughs> babies are a thing. Exactly! <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the comic book showdown of Ultimate Destiny. My name is Matt Campbell, and with me, as always, is Smurf eating his yogurt. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Gotta love it. <laughs> uh, yogurt. Who doesn't love yogurt? So my name is Matt Campbell. I, I am a comic book artist, a creator of a comic book series called Mythica. I also teach comics at a university. And today we're going to be reviewing multiple different comic campaigns, narrowed down to three through the Wheel of Destiny, which we will live react to and choose one to back. There can be only one. Based on how we see it as perceived by a consumer. Does it intrigue us? Does it tell us enough information that makes us want to buy it? And Smurf? Introduce the awesomeness that is you. I am Smurf. I am the purveyor of 5280 Geek. I am a co-founder of the Colorado Festival of Horror, and I am the commander of the Colorado Ghostbusters. And 5280 Geek has always got something wild and new on it, from Moments of Geek to my podcast, Weekend Geek Updates. We just put up a review about Devil Babies and about Devil Baby Movies. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a thing. Devil Babies are Devil a thing. Devil Babies! That's going to be the title of this show. Devil Babies are a thing. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it was a full weekend for me. So we went by RMC on Saturday. I went up to Outworld Brewery, stopped by the museum exhibit in Longmont, or as I like to fondly refer to it as Schlongmont. And then Sunday, we had the event at Totally 80s Pizza, which went off amazing, a total hit. And then, and then I went and hung out with Guy Fieri. It was great. I saw pictures of that. That's awesome. So I walked up to Guy Fieri, <laughs> and I said, I hear you you got some wicked spirits, so we'd like to make you an honorary Ghostbuster. And he just laughed. He's such a hero to me. I, I, I appreciate Guy. I love Guy, what he does for, for the community, how he helps people. And he just seems like a, he's a fun guy. So Well, I had a busy week, too. But one of the things that I was excited about this week is I got some comps in from one of the covers that I did for an indie comic that funded. Here is the example of that. Let me go. That's bad. That. So I have four of these. I'm keeping one because I got five comps. So if you're interested in getting one of these, message me. Let me know. I'll get those signed and sent off for you. That was Annabelle created by Todd Rayner, who also did did a comic called Ice Pick, which I did some art for as well. But I was excited to get those in the mail. I always like to get some some comps when I work on a on a project. All right, let's get right into it. I wanted to first check out the statistics from Kickstarter again. I'm excited to see how how much GI Joe affected and infused cash and attention in there. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a ton. Watch this. Let's see. Last week it had already jumped up the weekly influx of money for comic campaigns by about 1.7. It was averaging like 2.3 to around 2 million the week before. This week it's jumped now to 4.3 million because the GI Joe campaign on its own is up to two, almost 2 million. It's at like one. 1.8 million and yeah. over 5,000 backers, which is insane. And it just keeps going. I'm on the edge of my seat because I've talked to my girlfriend about it being a possible Christmas gift. I was like, oh, I'd make a great Christmas gift. I really want this thing. And so now it's like I've put it in the scenario where she doesn't want to tell me if she's getting it. So, so I'm not going to know. Put yourself in the corner is what you're telling. Me. I did because I can't go buy it and say, oh, never mind. I got it for myself. So uh, come Christmas time, I'm going to find out whether or not I've got it or not. Uh, we'll find out. Colfitch says, I swear mine has been steadily going. I, he's talking about his campaign with almost yeah. zero promotion. I have no idea of it's that strictly because of that campaign bringing eyes to Kickstarter in general. That's an interesting point. Something I thought about whether or not the success of this kick, of this GI Joe Kickstarter was going to bleed over into others or take away. Julie, my beautiful lady, has said, I've been to the sanctuary. It's awesome. All right, shall we get over to the Wheel of Destiny? This week, we have Alt and Spec number one, Immortal Coil, Gary Gorilla, Divine Retribution, Granite State Punk, 
and Phantasmagora. I'm looking forward to seeing which ones we get and reviewing these. So let's jump right in with number one. And the winner this week is gonna be, looks like Alton Speck, which her sci-fi Lost in Space comic. Okay, so next up. Granite State Punk. All right, and down to the last one. Last one is Immortal Coil. Congratulations to all those who have been chosen through the Wheel of Destiny. And once again, poor Gary Gorilla has not made it in. All right, looks like they've hit their goal. Alton Speck, number one, a mature sci-fi lost in space comic. Two diplomats are lost in space, clash against batshit crazy civilians, and try not to kill each other in their quest to return home. Let's take a look at the video, shall we? All right, that was it. Did I miss any? Did I miss something? <laughs> I don't think so. It was just a quick, quick preview. It was only 36 seconds long. It showed some some footage. It sounded at one point, the sound effect sounded like pee trickling on a, on a tile floor. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they've already hit goal, so evidently they have a pretty strong following. Is this like a continuation? Is this a new story? I don't know. We're going to find out. It might be somebody that just is well known. So it looks like Saltero Comics is the one who's created it. Here he says the, the story. There was a war between Earthlings and an alien race known as the Vituvians. I almost read that as the Vitamins. We have some, I will say this right off the bat, the artwork looks beautiful. I mean, the colors are are crisp. It really pops off the page. I like the character designs. I like the colors used on the characters even. I, I think it plays well to the dynamic. Already I can tell that, you know, they're homies, but, you know, there's some kind of good banter that probably happens between them. So I like what I'm seeing. I just don't know what, what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is alien. Let's see. Earthling General Alt Allion and Vituvian Special Agent Spadillion Vec, a.k.a. Spec. Oh, thank goodness. I, I don't like trying to learn a bunch of weird names when I read stories. We're a key yeah. negotiators to help resolve the differences between the two races. Earthling General Alt Valian. I suppose that's this girl because that seems to be the cover. Right. And Special Agent Spec, which I assume is this furry creature here. But their efforts came with a price while flying into a celebration of peace. Alt and Speck are pulled by a mysterious force into an unknown galaxy, perhaps even another dimension. Now they search the cosmos for a way back home. But what happens when you trap together a human and a Vituvian on a journey with a seemingly no end? So they're, they're trapped in space, That's which is what the, the hook at the beginning said. It's just about the two of them being trapped in space? Surely not. Interesting. Okay. Honestly, this looks really professional, looks really nicely done, beautiful art, beautiful colors. I feel like it probably has a good story, but I think the the description of what the story is, is going back to that thing that we've talked about in the past where you are describing the premise of the entire series mm -hmm. rather than describing what this particular issue is about. Yep. Cause I mean, I, I like the overall arc. I like the, like you said, the premise, the idea, but I mean, is this, I, I get, I go back to my first. Is this the beginning? Are there other issues? I don't. I don't. Well, it certainly said. I, I definitely feel like it's the beginning, as it says it's it's number one, and it says it's mature rated. So right away, it, uh, boobies. You know, yeah. There's gonna be probably gonna be boobies, which is probably a help in in some way. I'm I'm sure. I feel like Kickstarter currently, even with some of the controversy about them blocking some things, still the people on Kickstarter like to purchase their not safe for work, they're mature rated content on here. Uh, and as a side note to that, I have found that when 
you make not safe for work content. I personally have found that I do really well when I sell on Kickstarter and online platforms because people get to like buy it anonymously and add it to their secret stash. But when I go to a show and I put it out, they're like, oh, that's cool. And a lot of times they'll move on. I'm like, I don't want to buy this here, which is kind of weird. Some people don't really care. Other places like, you know, Denver Comic Con, they're like, oh, that, that's nice. Especially if they've got their, you know, their family or their their significant other with them. So yeah, it doesn't need to come off looking like a perv. No, I get it. Right. Right. But when I when we do it on, you know, campaign, it does really, really well every time. So let's see. I'm making sure to check these. Granite State is awesome. This is about to be an incredible episode of comics. That's a lot of comments on here. But have you ever heard of Immortal Coil? I wonder. We're gonna find out. Immortal Coil, I swear I've heard I do think I've heard that. <laughs> back to back to this thing here i like the layout I, it is very professional it, it's it's almost too professional in my opinion what like these guys have got their shit together they've got their stretch goals it's a it's a quick little blurb and maybe i'm just being nitpicky of just like well you know what am i getting in this issue uh um, well honestly hey there's your there's your boobies cover nice I definitely think this helps sell books on Kickstarter. Honestly, you, and you've said this before, I don't think you're being nitpicky. I think you're sticking to the format of this show, which is we're looking at this from the point of view of a consumer and from storytelling and 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 the pitch. You know, what are you giving us? So and I don't think you're deviating. Some great art, some wonderful colors. I can tell like I already like the, the dynamic between the two main characters. Gorgeous art. I mean, damn. Mm-hmm. A lot why are not safe for work so covers. They, why are they lost in space? What what happened? What 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 why where you know? I mean, <laughs> why is it just these two? Where's everybody else? <laughs> and I'm sure well, those and I, come as you read the comic, and that's the whole point. But you know, I and it says here, and I'm going to read this hook again. It says two diplomats are lost in space, clash against batshit crazy civilians, and try not to kill each other on their quest to return home. Something that helps, I feel like, when you have a situation where you're saying, oh, these two people are stuck in a situation is, well, how is that dynamic? Like, if I said Spock and Sherlock Holmes were stuck together, that would not be interesting because they're very similar characters. There's no conflict automatically just in their description. You have to help us understand why is this going to be interesting when we put these two people together. They did describe that one of them was a special agent and nope, that's it. That's all they said. There's a, a, yeah. a general and a special agent. So I don't really know anything about them. So I don't know why it's going to be entertaining, conflicting, exciting, whatever, other than the fact that apparently she walks around naked a lot. Score. Is that... Is that something that the the other character creature being an alien even cares about? Because it looks like it walks around naked all the time. We don't know what's under that pursuit. We don't. We don't. So I think that that would be a huge help. I mean, obviously, this campaign is already doing well. They have a following. They They have the boobies going for it. But if they added that little extra bit of say hey this is this character and this is this character and this is why it's going to be fun or this is what they're facing in this particular issue there would be more to understand and get excited and back and support that's that's just my two cents yeah i mean it, it looks great like i said if they just maybe it added just a little bit more to that that hook video mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I, I feel more excited i'm just kind of like okay i'm curious if i saw it on okay i'll tell you this if I saw it on the rack, I would leap through the book. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean I would buy it, but it does Warner at least a flip through. Well, he's eating yogurt, ladies and gentlemen. Please do us a favor. Be sure and like this live video. Uh, share it. Leave a comment. We're trying to grow this. We want to reach out to the indie comic community and the people who are making stories and help them tell their stories better, help them pitch, and ultimately help them raise funds to, to make their stories. So be sure and help us out by sharing it, liking, all that good stuff. What's the next one up, Smurf? Next up, we have Granite State Park. No, Punk. 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 Granite State Punk. <laughs> Granite State Punk, a coven is a rare gritty look at witches, New Hampshire, youth, addiction, and punk rock. So this is Granite State Punk 1 through 4, only posers fall in love. Granite State Punk is back, and this time with our boy Zeke, is in love and punching Nazis. 
Punk Rock, which is New Hampshire. That sounds fun. Punching zombies on Broadway, or Nazis on Broadway. Can't get any right. more health books than that. So they have a lofty $5,000 goal, but they do have 120 backers. We don't appear to have a video. It looks like they have had this campaign before with other previous books. So maybe they felt like they didn't need to, but I have never seen this book. So I'm coming in here as a new viewer. It says Granite State Punk is an adult, hardcore, edgy comic book series created by Travis Gibb and explores punk rock, witches, and social criticism. This is the fourth volume of Granite State Punk. In this issue, find our beloved punk rock witch Zeke finds himself entangled in love's clutches. Zeke, still struggling with his new commitment to sobriety, now has to navigate this unfamiliar terrain of being in love as we delve into this romantic ex-girlfriend's past, trying not to relive past mistakes. This least, least to shockingly leads to, I think is what they were trying to say. Shockingly find out that one of his former girlfriends has since they broke up become a Nazi punk. So Zeke needs to address two universal punk rock truths if he's going to untangle. I'm not sure. Little confused here. Uh, Clofitch says, absolutely check out their final reward, The Slab. So I think we're on the right, right track here. Thank you. Our whole publishing company was built and is supported by Kickstarter. Love hearing that. Love seeing the the fans. I recently did a post uh, just yesterday about the Mythica Maniac fans. Love seeing that. Mm -hmm. This this adds some some legitimacy. What do you think so far? I would say, first of all, make sure you have someone look at your stuff before you post it, because editing is a thing. Yeah, I said a <laughs> few spelling mistakes for sure. Yeah, I mean it. It. I like the idea. I I I'd read it. I'm I'm just kind of like, okay. I don't know if I would have read this far into it. You know. Yeah, like I'm coming, I'm going, I'm, I'm digging deep, pretty deep to try and find out what's going on. And I don't know that my initial instinct would have been to dig this far. No. And I, I, I can kind of say, okay, cool. I like the premise and all of that, but give me, give me something. I don't want to go three quarters of the page before I get to what's this about. And I know they're, they're, they're relying on their, their membership that have already been here who have already. Mm -hmm gone through and god love the fans that are already here but what about the ones that are late to the party in in inviting them in let's let's let, let how do you how do you hook those people and that's i think the the, the hardest thing to do because you start taking for granted okay well i've got all these people the other ones will just will get it some don't have that kind of bandwidth or patience <laughs> and all I, right a couple. Sure travis is an awesome writer i'm not saying that he's not how do I know that if I'm going down three fourths of the page before I can get anything solid? Right, so right, right. I, I, I think this is a great premise. I want to read it. It's not a question of not wanting to read. It's a, it, of getting to what is it that I'm reading. Right, right, right. I think that there's obviously some superb writing talent. It says in here like Ringo nominated creator. I've, I've heard and backed, I think, some of Travis's stuff in the past but i'm just trying to get uh, my my head around like what this book is granite state punk is an ongoing series told in a series of one shots this far we successfully published three breaking edge the coven and the original granite state punk it's great i mean i like the artwork i mean it's gritty it looks fun all right so this is our this is my last chance to to dive in here Those only posers fall in love Zeke has fallen in love, starting a spiral with this new feeling of happiness that leads him to explore the ghost of his girlfriend's past, leading him to a former girl who has now become a Nazi punk. All right, so break that down. He's a guy. I don't know much about Zeke. Uh, right now, he's just a guy. And he's fallen in love and starting to spiral with this new feeling of happiness. So he's in love. And sober. It leads him to explore the ghost of his girlfriend's past that leads him to a former girl who has now become a Nazi punk. So... Essentially, he's in love with a girl who's who's now a Nazi punk. And so is it that he doesn't approve of what she's into? And that's the, the conflict. So, I mean, again, I don't feel like giving a little bit of info about what the conflict is, is spoiler. Because, again, I don't know who Zeke is yet. Uh, oh, here, this is Zeke, a middle-aged bitter punk, a straight edge kind of a warlock from New Hampshire, kind of a prick, hates everyone. I'm a little confused. Shouldn't be too terribly upset that this girl's a Nazi, right? If you got for you guys in the audience, if you're familiar with this, like help me out here. I'm just not tracking with what the conflict is here. So help me out. 
I feel like, again, we've got stellar art. I'm sure the story is good. I believe it because I've seen Travis's work. He's done a lot of other great stuff. I just don't know that right now my initial instinct is I got to read these other issues to really like understand who Zeke is, but maybe not. I don't know. I mean, once so, you become a Nazi, is it like you need a stake through the heart or, you know, <laughs> can you just talk some sense into him? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Can she not be saved? Is 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 he going to go undercover and be a Nazi himself to save her? I, I don't know. I don't know the motivation. Is he that much in love that he just can't say meh? And, you know, go back to punking on his own. I don't know. One quick thing I'm going to try to do because the audience is asking for it. it says Clofitch says, check out their final reward, the slab. So let's let's pull that up real fast. We have a one of a kind slab that was made and destroyed by the creative team of Granite Slate Punk. Our goal was to make it ungradable. However, it was so bad that they rejected it. So we made our own heavily damaged slab. This is a one of a kind item custom made with duct tape and love. We also give you all the variants from only posers fall in love. I think it's a great marketing ploy. And I I mean, it seems total punk to do that. It does. Like, own slab, yes. Duct tape. I mean, that does seem like the punk thing to do. And yes. I like the, the ingenuity. I think that that it, it's in a way it's like given, you know, CGC the finger, like, fuck you. We'll do our own slap then you piece of shit. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like the punk mentality. Of, yes. Of, yes. It is ridiculous. And I love it too. I I'm totally with you on this. Cause it's, it's something fun. And I, I'm not saying these guys are original. I like that. And they're taking the punk mentality to that, that next that next level uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, think I think it's fun definitely, yep. definitely out of out of the doc martin kind of thinking i i do from that point of view i do see how how it's punk how it's cool i would have liked to have seen it because it says at the end well i'll give you all the variants from only posers fall in love which is this this current issue i think i would also like to see all the other issues included in that so that i have the whole thing and especially if i've never it's been involved with this particular story arc before. I'm kind of intrigued in that it's got some great art. It's got some art or some great writing talent. I'm very familiar with Travis Gibbs' work. There's some there that, the you know, the, the, the premise of the punk stuff is intriguing, but I don't really know a whole lot about the story. So that's, that's where I'm currently at. Uh, what about you? I'm right there with you. Absolutely. All right. I believe the last one uh, is Immortal Coil, right? The Immortal Coil! <laughs> All right. To the last one. Immortal Coil, issue one. Mythic Gods and Eldritch Horror. A horror comic of Mythic Gods, Eldritch Monsters, Retribution, Awakenings. The first Ragnarok was a hoax. The second won't be. Already I'm getting some familiarity with this particular arc and, and Mythica which is kind of tingly and exciting. <laughs> Let's see what the video is all about. So far, what do you get from it? I like it. It kind of has an American Gods kind of feel to it. It's got uh, some Norse mythology, which I am kind of digging on right now. So I, I like the runes as, you know, we're scrolling through. It's not too busy and the music is just is perfect. I don't see it. I don't see anything to pull apart on on the video. I think it's not perfect, but it definitely got my attention. I don't think a voiceover would have helped with that. I think the pacing was good and, and it, I, I actually were, was captivated to see what was going on, especially with all like the pencils and all of that, the artwork. And I like it. I like it a lot. One thing I feel like all three of the campaigns we looked at today have done a really good job of right out of the gate is kind of setting the tone and the genre of their stories. 
Yep. The first one with Alton Speck, it felt sci-fi right away. It felt like it could be comedy, definitely sexy. Then we had the punk rock one that screened punk rock all the way through. And then we have this one that feels dark. I th definitely feel some Neil Gaiman influence going on. Becky says the same thing. Video makes me want to know more about the story. So let's let's dig a little deeper. Immortal Coil, beautiful art. Again, that's another thing this, this today's show. All three of these have had beautiful artwork. Yep, and the colors are on point. Nothing is, I mean, even with, with the punk one, even though it was kind of like gritty and kind of like wild, it all fit the environment and, and the story that they're telling. I mean, mm -hmm. I think like other stories, it probably would have annoyed me, but it worked so well for punk, kind of like Max. I mean, that mm -hmm. style of artwork worked really well with the character, and the same thing can be said of punk. It, it really, I think, emphasizes the story. And the same thing here. I mean, this looks great and it's very stylized yet it still gives you that feel of it, it suits it fits it fits very well all right digging a little deeper it says immortal coil a mythological horror noir comic written and illustrated by gerald von Stardard, colored by gilherm lindenberg i'm totally butchering that <laughs> and lettered by rob jones sorry for whoever was the colorist on there the story reimagines the gods of Norse mythology in a modern world. Definitely has that American gods kind of feel. Yeah. A world that remains the only realm left. Ragnarok, we thought we knew, was a conspiracy of illusion to banish Loki forever and to make Earth their final home. Awakened and set on a course of revenge, a plot a millennium in the making, Loki seeks a sliver of Nilerthrotep and the crawling chaos to become his avatar and bring about Final destruction of everything left standing. With hell by his side, he sets a plan in motion that tears the veil between the mortal and the immortal world. To end all things, the lord of all things must be awakened. Odin's only hope lies with his grandchildren who have been dormant in the human host for thousands of years. So, pretty epic gods clashing, Loki trying to make a second uh, attempt at taking over. Sounds beautiful. I'm interested. Uh, I see this in order sequential preview, which looks pretty awesome. I love the the color changing from warm tones to cool tones. Now, to be fair to what we've said to the other comics that we've looked at today, I would say that this would still benefit a bit from selling me what this issue is about. I'm hooked, but I still don't know what this issue is going to be. It's yeah. basically, and it is an issue one, you know, to be fair, you're not wanting to give too much away, but everything I've read so far seems like it's telling me what this entire story is going to be about, which has been very helpful to be sure. Yeah. And it's also helpful that we have an understanding of these characters a little bit, like we all are familiar with, with the Norse gods. So we don't have to like go, who is Zeke, you know? And then we got like the mention of demigods, the children or the grandchildren. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very curious. So are we getting introduced to them? Is this kind of background for Loki and why the first Ragnarok was a hoax? I mean, do we right. get these? I mean, I think that that would be kind of like in this issue, we get introduced or just a simple, just a simple blurb to just say, okay, here's what, here's what you can expect in issue one. Uh, oh, here we go. Immortal Coil is fully scripted, and by that I mean its ultimate goal is to share with you a fantastic story as intended for a 115-page volume. But for now, I hope to bring you to, into this world with me in a 24-page first issue. I think that should be highlighted and definitely higher up. Actually, Gerald's here with us right now. Two things. One, you've introduced an epic story, which I'm intrigued, I'm def especially since this is sort of fitting in my wheelhouse of creativity anyway. But A... When it's epic, we want to know how epic, like how many issues am I going to invest in? Because right. A, you're a new, you're a new, well, you may not be a new creator, I'm, but this is a new book. And so if I'm new coming into the scene, my, my, my only real apprehension is going to be a, how long is it? And B, how quickly are these going to come out? And am I going to have to wait for a really long time before I finally see the conclusion of this, this story? So that little bit, that sentence that you wrote down in the down the bottom, I think putting that up somewhere near the top saying, hey, in this story, we're going to introduce you to some of the characters, introduce you to, you know, some of the the problems and really get your feet wet for the upcoming story that's going to be, you know, 100 and 
12, 110 pages or whatever. Yeah, that, um, that should be the lead in. Don't, don't, yeah, that you buried the lead. That that should be the kickoff. Literally, and, literally buried the lead. And you buried the lead. Um, but that's that is where it should really start off. Because after after you get that out of the way, you, you have my attention even more. Okay. So what what what's everything else about? So once you get that established, it's easier to expand. So it, you know, it's like telling a story. You don't start with the, you know, the ending. What's the lead in? How do we get going? And I think that that should be up at the top for sure. But uh, you still have my attention. Just placement, placement, placement. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, vid video was great. The yeah. art is great. The storytelling looks like it's going to be pretty great. I, I've i been glancing through the, the writing here, even on these three pages, and it sounds gorgeous. engaging. What's that? Fire scene is just gorgeous. I mean, just the colors, mm -hmm. the shadowing. I mean, it just it, it sets a perfect tone. It's beautiful. I mean, uh, this is the one time that I would probably say uh, I like the colors better than I would just a regular black and white sketch because that just it lends so much to to the atmosphere, and I like that a lot. Very well done. I also I want to say I'm a little bit jelly. Um, I've had some great colorists over time, and I I want to say I'm always trying to explain to them what I mean by I want muted but colorful, <laughs> and this hits the nail on the head um, because my my story is also dark. It it has to do with mythical you know, uh, Celtic gods instead of Nordic gods, and it take, also takes place in World War One, so I don't want that vibrant comic book look. I want this muted dark tone mixed with a lot of blacks, and this is exactly you know what I would just want to describe them. So I might like you know have to save this shot just to, sh to show future colorists. Right now, I've got, I think I've got my colorist dialed in pretty well for yeah. what he's doing, but. You know, as everyone knows, colorists do tend to change over time. But this is a great, a great example of exactly what I try to shoot for in mind. Colorful, but muted. All right. Time to decide who will be chosen to support this week. We've had a lot of great entries with beautiful art. I am overwhelmed by how much effort has been going, being put into these Kickstarters. I really get excited when I see high level indie comics on Kickstarter and on on the other crowdfunding campaigns because the higher the quality, the higher the level, not only does it do better for your book, but it also just raises the general level of of respect for comics in the in the community. Because right now the sliver of people that actually read comics is so narrow. And a lot of that's due to the fact that people tend to still see comics a lot of times as not real literature not good writing. It's just boobies or Michael Bay level writing where they're like, look at me, I'm going to defeat the enemy. You know, it's simple stuff. And sometimes comics can be that, but if we can balance in this, this great storytelling and people go, oh, there are really great things. So speaking of Neil Gaiman, I think that's one of the things he brought to comics is that, that higher level. We're now seeing professors in college utilizing besides me uh utilizing things like neil gaiman's books in in english literature classes yep. so well i mean even uh, like Alan Moore. i mean he laid the groundwork frank miller uh i mean those two guys absolute juggernauts in the field of writing and you're right neil gaiman just ratcheted up even more building on the success that those guys have i mean i know cu offers like a college course on comics and the literature for comics and it's it's a class mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and just to see that it's inspiring and and to see i mean i can't tell you how many people i know in my past life learned to read using comics you know like I, a lot of gen xers learn to read by just comics and looking up words that you know they didn't know what they meant. So it, it just expanded their vocabulary. It helped widen their minds because it's still reading. And there are some compelling stories. Yes, there are, you know, the standard 
rock 'em sock 'em biff bam booms but i mean there's still some content behind there like all the older batmans when he's actually a detective mm-hmm. and they're doing detective stories the, the, those are some of my favorite stuff and i know amazing spider-man is trying to get back to the the storytelling caliber and i think zeb wells is doing a good job over there and to see that happen again and the indie guys have never gone away they continue to deliver stories that you know make you think and compel you to to turn the page yeah i'm absolutely and i'm excited about it all right our, our audience is is eagerly awaiting who we've chosen are you ready i am too all right on the count of three three two one congratulations gerald all right, what was the deciding factor for you? Why did you end up going with the Mortal Kombat? By the way, love your artwork, love your hammer and your lightning. Good job. <laughs> why did my screen suddenly? Oh, that's why, because I had that paper up, and now it's yeah, like yeah. out of yeah. focus. Da, 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 da. It doesn't want to like focus Mortal back. Coil simply because uh, I think it presented the whole package much. <laughs> I can't get it to go back in focus. And this is where Matt breaks. Um, I'm all dr- I feel like I'm all I, drunk now. What we saw in Immortal Coil is is basically what this show is about. It it delivers something that is compelling. Uh, and like I said, maybe the placement's a little wonky, but everything, all of the the boxes got checked, and the artwork on all of them is great. But sometimes it's not just the artwork; it's it's what we're what what are you delivering? And I had all of those questions answered by by the end i didn't walk away going well what about this what about that at the end of this i had all my questions answered and that's kind of how i came to the decision out of these three because all three are worthy of putting money behind absolutely but that's it checking the boxes mortal coil all the way right on yes congratulations gerald and so we'll be posting your link and a congratulations on our website. I'll be going over there to support very shortly. Be sure you guys share links to your, uh, to other people's campaigns. If you feel like there, there's something that, that deserves some support on our, uh, Gerald says no Mythica, but I'm trying, actually, this looks beautiful, man. Uh, don't compare yourself to mine. I made so many mistakes when I started Mythica, I was on my own and, uh just fumbling like for instance one of the things that we talked about today was like how to present your your story uh as a whole and then also as an individual comic i definitely didn't do that with my first issue uh, i was just just fumbling my way through this is things that, a lot of things that i talk about are things i've learned from making the mistakes the hard way like why the hell my camera won't reset <laughs> <laughs> So what happens when you use, you know, automatic zoom or automatic focus, I guess. But back to what I was saying, be sure that you guys share the the link each week about 1230 or so. There's an automatic link that'll go up that where you can post links for the, the, the Friday show. And it doesn't have to be your campaign. If you feel like you see someone else's campaign that you feel like deserves a spot, by all means, go ahead and, and post it up. We're also trying to share these in groups and Action Line Studios does the sharing first, but if you know groups that they're not being shared in, by all means, share it in those as well. You can follow us on Action Line Studios at Facebook or at Matt Campbell Arts. This video will be edited and posted onto the YouTube page, uh, YouTube at Matt Campbell Arts. So be sure and check that out there. Smurf, where can they find you? You can find us at 5280geek everywhere, 5280geek.com, on Facebook, Instagram, on all of your podcasting platforms is either 5280 Geek or the Weekend Geek Update. Uh, this will be shared on there as well. So if you miss it on Action Line, it will be on the 5280 side. So uh, you can check that out. Give us a like. Give us a share. Tell everyone about the dirty little secret that we are. Uh, <laughs> we like to entertain. We do. We do our best to try to make our show entertaining, educational, fun, and a little bit not safe for work once in a while. Lots of not safe for work. <laughs> boobies. Boobies. Save the boobies.
<laughs> and on that bombshell, we shall say goodbye. In the meantime, run fast, laugh hard, and always be kind. Good night!